Welcome to Determining Linkage Levels with Droplet Digital PCR Instructional Module. My name is Frank Bisworn and I am part of the Digital Biology Group of Biorad Laboratories. In this, the second of two short modules looking at linkage, we will look at how to determine linkage levels. From our previous session on linkage, we were able to quantify how many linked events we had in the sample. You are probably wondering how we determine these levels. For those of you who remember some of their statistics classes, random distributions are very predictable if we have sufficient events or data points being analyzed. The classic example is flipping a coin to see if it lands with a face on the upper side or a diagram, commonly referred to as heads or tails. If this event is only analyzed once, there is a 100% chance that the coin will land on either head or tail. As the number of tosses are increased, the distribution becomes heavily weighed towards the center or the 50% mark. When using droplet digital PCR, we typically analyze over 10,000 events, which in our case are droplets, to see what the distribution patterns look like. To explain how we determine linkage, let's first take an example where the two targets are not linked. If we were to run that sample and look at the 2D plot, we would see droplets that are both positive and negative for both FAM and HEX. If we were to look at the 1D plot for this data under the FAM channel and counted the number of positives and negatives, in this example we see that 41.8% of the droplets are positive for FAM. If we now go back to the 2D plot, we see that this 41.8% positivity rate is composed of droplets that are positive for FAM and positive for both FAM and HEX. If we look at the ratio of droplets that are FAM positive with and without the presence of a HEX target, we see that the ratio of positives is effectively the same on both sides. Performing the same analysis on the HEX positive droplets yields similar results. The ratio of positive droplets for HEX in the absence of a FAM target is 30.8% and 30.2% with a FAM target present in them. Because the targets for FAM and HEX are not linked, they are randomly distributed in a uniform fashion. As you can see in this example, the ratio of positive to total droplets for any target, either FAM or HEX, is constant whether a second target is being co-amplified in that droplet or not. Since the ratio of positives are maintained in both axes, having information on any three of the clusters would allow us to determine these ratios and calculate the expected value of the fourth. Now let's look at a sample that has linked molecules. When items are linked, the molecules that would migrate to either a FAM or a HEX droplet on their own are stuck together and end up in the double positive cluster. Looking at the total percentage of droplets that are FAM positive, we see that they are 57.9% for the entire assay. When we look at the ratio of positives as a function of the presence or absence of the other target, we immediately notice that the ratios differ. The ratio of FAM only positive droplets is reduced, and the ratio of FAM positive in droplets that are also HEX positive is increased. A similar analysis of the HEX positive droplets in the presence or absence of a FAM signal shows a similar pattern. To calculate linkage, we first look at the single positives for both FAM and HEX droplets and calculate their abundance with respect to the negatives. In this case, 55.2% for target A and 26.6% for target B. We then take these ratios to extrapolate the number of droplets that we expect in the double positive cluster. In this case, we would expect the double positive cluster to have 2,017 droplets. The actual number of droplets in the double positive quadrant was 2,906, or 889 more than expected. When these numbers do not match, we know there is linkage and are able to use the droplet counts to calculate how many of these are due to the linked events. We apply Poisson distribution analysis to determine accurate concentrations for both FAM and HEX targets, in our case target A and target B, as well as the number of linked molecules. Of course, 
All this analysis is processed by the Quantasoft or the QX Manager software. In conclusion, using Droplet Digital PCR and combining simple assays can not only provide accurate quantification of the targets of interest, but also give us information on their spatial distancing. Linkage analysis uses variations in what would be the normal distribution of randomly distributed events. And remember that the principle can be expanded to more targets using advanced multiplexing and more floors. Thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. For more information on digital PCR and its various applications, download the Droplet Digital PCR Applications Guide, Bulletin 6407 from Biorad.com, or watch another video in our Master Class series. If you would like to browse our in vitro validated assays for mutation, CNV, gene expression, or to design your own, please visit Biorad.com slash digital assays. Thanks again.